Hi guys, my name's Callum and you're watching Goals and Gossip. Today I'm back for another video. I've just watched the Man United v Liverpool game, very interesting game, we'll get into that in a minute. But you're just about to watch my Premier League weekend roundup. Guys, this is future Callum right now and I know you're probably thinking right now, wait a minute, that was a couple of days ago mate. And yes it was. And I didn't have time to edit it pretty much, that's my excuse. But just bear in mind when you're watching the rest of this video that... Not all games will be covered. Let's get on with the video. Right, so I mean as I've just watched the Man United game. I know it's not really in chronological order, but I'm going to start with the Man United game. I think the main thing for Man United coming into this game, clear at the top of the table, was that they don't lose. Because if they lose, I think it's going to be very hard for them to regain that confidence because their away record is so good and Liverpool home record is so good. So I think it was a good result for Man United and potentially a bit disappointing for Liverpool. I thought... They could have really pressed on to get a winner there. They didn't really look themselves. I think I think both sides really didn't. I didn't think really Mane was at it and Salah really as good as we've seen them before. And Bruno looked to have a better enough day. He didn't even have a penalty, which is surprising. <laughs> Even though it was a nil-nil, it was quite an exciting game for the neutral. I felt quite a lot of chances. Man United grew into the game late on. Right, so cast your minds back to early Saturday morning when Wolves played West Brom. Now, this game raised a lot of eyebrows. I think West Brom under Sam Allardyce, they've kind of... I don't want to say they've brought a new tactic because they definitely haven't, but... They look more compact. They look very kind of organised defensively as Sam Allardyce has gotten into that. And that has really shown, especially against Wolves. And it showed against Liverpool as well. You know, they have had slip-ups, like the Leeds defeat, 5-0. But, you know, I think they played very well, West Brom. Obviously, Pereira scoring two penalties. Um, Fabio Silva, obviously, scoring. It's brilliant uh, for, him, for his confidence for Wolves. Um, only still very young. Willy Body had a very mixed game. He, you, you know, he... Gave away a penalty, got an assist and scored himself, but conceded three goals. <laughs> it was a very strange game for him. The player that stood out to me, though, was Bartley at the back. Um, I thought he had a wonderful game. Him with Sami Ajayi. I did watch the game, actually, and I did think uh, West Brom were very impressive. However, I'm not really convinced they're still going to stay up. I think it will be very, very hard for them. Right, on to the next game. It was Leeds v Brighton. Now... I was quite disappointed with Leeds in this game because I've seen they have so much attacking threat, you know, and especially against Brighton, you thought they'd exploit that a lot, um, but they didn't, quite honestly. Uh, Neil Morpé, he has been left out quite a few times this season for Brighton. However, he did get the all-important goal in this game. It was a lovely goal. However, Ailing's marking was a bit off. I would show it in the video right now, but copyright, and I'll get copyrighted for it. Um, but Leeds, they're such an inconsistent team, but brilliant to watch. Um, but yeah, I think they'll probably stay up. I'm pretty sure they will. I mean, their attacking threat is so good. Their defensive side, they might need to work on a bit. But, you know, if you're playing like that, you're going to make mistakes. And I don't think Bielsa really minds it that much because they're all trying to, you know, play the way he wants. So that's the main thing. And of course, get results. This is the only game I didn't watch, West Ham v Burnley. And, you know, West Ham um, are creeping up the table. They're going very unnoticed, but they are starting to get in the mix, really. Not, you know, I'm not saying West Ham are going to, you know, finish really high, but they are picking up results here and there. And they're not as convincing as probably people, like better teams would be. Um, but, you know, Mikel Antonio is back from an injury. And after Haller has gone, he really needs to step up. And he was doing it brilliantly before he got injured. Now, this was on Prime Video as well. And for me, when we use Prime Video, the connections are not great. And obviously, I actually prefer it a lot more, probably like you guys, for it to be on Sky and BT. Because I think the pundits are a lot better. If you like to hear what they say and stuff pre-match and post-match, like I watch it. Um, I think the pundits are so much better on BT and Sky. I mean, I mean that is very obvious, but they are a lot, lot better. And, you know, I think, though, it is the kind of the way football's going at the moment because Amazon, you know, they're a huge company and they're venturing into football a bit, which is I think is quite good for them. Uh, but, yeah, 1-0 in that game it finished. So, let's get on to the next one. All right, Fulham v Chelsea. This was a very enticing game. I liked this game a lot. 
Obviously, there were lots of little bits in it which stood out. Firstly, the Anthony Robinson red card. Now, this is why I'm talking about pundits because they were all talking on it at half time. I'm, to be honest, I'm not fully convinced because I don't think that was as cynical as a red card should be. But, uh, you know, it's just uh, my opinion, I guess. Just let me know what you think on Instagram anyway. DM me. I'll leave the link just down below. Goals and gossip underscore. And you know, we're collecting a lot more follows, which I really, um, really appreciate from you guys. And yeah, let's just keep on pushing that up in the numbers. You know, obviously Mason Mount got the goal in the end. And I think Fulham were really coming into the game, which was a disappointing thing for them. Um, I actually, I'm not sure if they will go down Fulham. I think they are playing very nice football. They look, if you compare their performance against Spurs and Chelsea for when they played Arsenal at the start of the season, their defending has improved so much. And, you know, it, te it took a bit of class to, you know, get past their defence. And it was, it was Mason Mount. And of course, no one can doubt his talent. He hit the bar early in the game. Obviously, he's a great player and probably one of the first names on Chelsea's team sheet at the moment. I don't think anyone's really safe on their team sheet, maybe by him and Chilwell, maybe Kante, but he did make a mistake last week, you know. And, you know, I think he's a very, very promising player and he saved Chelsea in some situations, to be honest. Right, this game was another very interesting game. Um, Yuri Tielemans getting both assists for Madison and Barnes. You know, Leicester won 2-0 in this game and two teams which have been performing very well recently, Leicester and Southampton, specifically Leicester. I thought James Madison was very, very impressive. You know, his goal, the turn and the shot into the roof and the hair, no goalkeeper safe in that. You know, obviously Gareth Southgate was watching on, if you didn't see as well. And they have a few very good stand-up players. Madison, one goal scorer. Harvey Barnes, the other one. He's really, really impressed me, Harvey Barnes. 95th minute, just killed off the game, really. But I think he has a lot of potential. You know, other players playing for England, who James Justin, he's been excellent. Obviously, Ricardo was on the bench, which means he might be out of the team very soon. But I think it will be harsh on him. Although Pereira is such, such a good player and he's very versatile, so is Justin. And I think he's been so good for Leicester so far this season. And I think it would be a shame for him to drop out. You know, England have been suffering a bit for a backup left back. And I think Justin could do that job. Obviously, I know Saka is, but I think he's better a bit further forwards, maybe on the right. I don't think he'll start anyway, but, you know, I'm getting off topic. Let's move on to the next one. Right, into the last game. And this was such an important game for us, Spurs. And we came into it after a disappointing draw against Fulham, obviously. We looked absolutely awful. I don't know if you watched the game, you guys. You can let me know on Instagram, as I said. It will be down in the description. But, you know, I think Spurs came out of this game looking quite good, actually. Mourinho said in the pre-match and post-match comments, he said that he doesn't actually say to the players at half-time, the defend, and he wants them to go for more goals. But, in my opinion, I think he's shifting the blame a bit onto the players. But, the players stepped up in this game. I thought when McGoldrick scored after Kane and Aurier, that it was going to be a bit of a... Back to the wall or like, you know, same old, same old because we've dropped 10 points from winning positions. Let me reiterate that. 10 points. Five more than any other team. I mean, if we didn't drop those points, we'd be sky high at the top of the table ahead of United. You know, I thought it was a very impressive performance from Spurs and potentially goal of the season from Tangy and Dombele. Now, I've been raving out this guy so much because... You know, obviously last season he had a lot of troubles with Mourinho and he was getting benched a lot, probably wasn't fit enough. But Mourinho stuck with him, he believed in him and now it's coming to fruition. He looks absolutely amazing for Tottenham. His goal of the season, you know, I think it actually could be goal of the season. Stevie Birdfine's done a little lob over and he's got it from a very, very tight angle and it's lobbed the goalkeeper and gone in. I'll leave a picture here from the angle it was from, but I can't actually include the clip because of copyright. Please stop the copyright. So I thought it was impressive by Tottenham and we are putting more of a statement out there that we are aiming for the top and we're not gonna stop. Oh, that actually rhymed. But, you know, another player I wanna talk about is Gareth Bell. Now, I've seen quite a lot of people saying he's a flop, he's this, he's that. But from my perspective, I'm a Tottenham fan. And obviously, he hasn't lived up to expectations yet. He's come in from not playing hardly any game for Real Madrid. And I know for a player of his quality, he'll be wanting to play more. But to be honest, he looks very happy at Spurs at the moment. 
and I would take him on an optional year again on a loan. But I don't think people understand that the reason he came in was probably not to take us right to the top. I think also, and I think it definitely has, it's improved team morale so much. I mean, I think the game after we signed him was West Ham. Now, obviously, you guys remember this from the crazy comeback and the Lanzini goal, but I think we're 3-0 up in about 25 minutes in that game, and we looked unbelievable. I think we scored in the first 30 seconds, something like that. That's what he does for team morale, and obviously, we have slipped away a bit here and there during the season so far, but we're only just halfway through the season, and I think he has so much more to offer further into the season, really. So, I'm actually going to wrap up the video there. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe down below. I really, really appreciate it. Obviously, I've said this so many times, but it's red at the moment. Let's turn it grey. Make yourself subscribe to the channel. We're going to be doing more content like this and even better content when we can go back to football. I'm not sure if I said already, I might have said in my intro video if you watch that, but I'm actually a season ticket holder at Tottenham, so I will be doing some vlogs for you guys. I hope this channel turns into something really, really big because, you know, I'd really, really appreciate that and it means so much to me. So, subscribe. Do a big thumbs up down below and follow me on all my social medias and share. They'll all be down in the description. Goals and gossip underscore. So, thanks for watching and gossip less about. See you later, boys.